Grenade by Alan Gratz, Part 2, pages 184 through 190. Family. It was safer to travel by night, when the American planes weren't flying and the battleships weren't shooting, but Hideki was exhausted. He had to find some place to sleep. He broke away from the refugees and soldiers plodding south and soon came to a family tomb. Hideki almost cried with relief. He staggered inside, hoping the ancestors resting there would forgive him for invading their home for one night. But the ancestors weren't the ones he needed to worry about. The family who owned the tomb were already hiding there. There were eight of them, a mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, and four small children, all huddled in the back. I'm sorry, Hideki told them. I just need to get in out of the rain. I need to sit down. He didn't wait for them to say yes. Hideki's weary legs gave out, and he flopped to the floor of the tomb. It was all he could do to keep his eyes open. He let his pack slip off his back for the first time that day, and he slumped over, absolutely exhausted. The family crept over to meet him and introduced themselves. Their last name was Miyagi. They each told him their first names too, but Hideki was too tired to remember any of them. They had been living in this tomb since the battle began, they told him. Not one of them had been outside in two months. They still had water, but their food had run out five days ago. The littlest of the children looked shrunken, like his body was eating itself from the inside out, and they all had hollow eyes and sunken cheeks. They look like ghosts, Hideki thought to himself, like their long-dead ancestors, resurrected. Hideki thought of his father, perhaps never to be buried in the Kinoshiro family tomb, and he sagged. Why don't you evacuate? Hideki finally asked them. Why did you stay? We thought the Imperial Japanese Army would protect us, Father Miyagi said. This is our home, Grandfather Miyagi added. This is where our ancestors live. Hideki closed his eyes and nodded. It was the same answer he would have gotten from any of the refugees streaming south. This is our home. The Japanese will protect us. One of those things was true. The other was far from it. Are the Americans really coming this way? Mother Miyagi asked Hideki. Hideki was too tired to lie to them. Yes, he said. The children gasped and clutched at each other. Is it true what they say? That the Americans are monsters? Father Miyagi asked. Again, Hideki wanted to tell them the truth, but what was the truth? Yes, he told them, and no. When they're fighting, the Americans are killing machines. When they're not, they're like us. Hideki pulled the wet tangle of bandages from his head. One of their doctors fixed me when I was hurt, he told the Miyagis, and they'll give you food if you ask for it. Hideki pulled his pack around and fished out what was left of the ration boxes. They were coated with a waxy substance that helped keep them dry from the rain. The crackers were fairly disintegrated, but there was some chewy gray stuff, a few practically indestructible candy bars, and the meals in the tins. Hideki cracked one of the cans open and Grandfather Miyagi cried out longingly at the delicious smell. Hideki took a bite to show them it was all right and offered it to the family. It's not poisoned, Hideki promised them. I've already eaten one, and I didn't get sick. The Miyagis were too hungry to refuse. They fed the children first, and Hideki gave a second can to the adults. They all ate with relief, moaning gratefully. I don't understand, Grandmother Miyagi said when she'd finished eating. She had black squares and circles and arrows tattooed on the back of her hands, just like the kind old woman who had tried to help Hideki get rid of Ray's Mabui in the cave. You say the American devils were nice to you, but we were told they would kill our babies. No, Hideki said. They're only monsters when they're afraid, just like the Japanese. All the Japanese and Americans care about is killing each other. You should surrender to the Americans. Surrender? Father Miyagi said. But they'll kill us. Not if you go to them now, Hideki replied. If you wait until they're fighting... Until they've all become monsters, they'll eat you up. Do you understand? If you surrender to them without threatening them, they'll help you. Hideki's suggestion caused a great deal of discussion, but he was too tired to be a part of it. After eating a bit of a candy bar, he laid his head on the American backpack and went to sleep.
When Hideki woke, the Miyagi family had made a decision. We're going to surrender, Mother Miyagi said. Father Miyagi didn't look too happy about it, but there wasn't much to argue about at this point. They had run out of food. They wouldn't have lasted a day or two more if Hideki hadn't come along, and he was out of tin cans. Will you take us to the Americans? Grandfather Miyagi asked Hideki. It would be going backward a little way for Hideki, but he agreed. He walked with the Miyagis out of the tomb, back out into that awful, rainy darkness, and led them the way he had come. He wasn't moving forward anymore. He had been going back for days now, and now he was going back again. But this time it felt right, like he was working toward something at last. The American soldiers had made camp for the night. They weren't fighting, but they were weary. Hideki made sure the soldiers could see and hear them coming in the darkness, and soon flashlights were shining in their faces, blinding the poor Miyagis, who hadn't seen daylight in more than two months. The Miyagis had tied a white piece of cloth to a pole, and Father Miyagi waved it frantically. An American, who spoke bad Japanese, demanded to know who they were, and Hideki answered back on slow Japanese that they were Okinawan refugees. The grenade in Hideki's pocket had never felt heavier more conspicuous. He was sure the Americans would see the bulge and shoot him, but after a tense few minutes of interrogation, the Americans finally lowered their lights and their weapons, and someone came to meet the Miyagis. Hideki tried to slip away into the darkness, but Mother Miyagi saw him. Aren't you coming with us? she asked. Hideki was tempted. He knew the Americans would give him food, shoes, a dry place to sleep. They would take him away from the fighting and death. All this misery, all this suffering would be over for him. But not for Kimiko. No, Hideki told her, I have to keep going south to find my sister. I have to make sure she's safe. She's the only family I have left. Mother Miyagi suddenly pulled Hideki into a hug. He was old enough these days to grumble through a hug from his own mother. But she was gone now, and it had been so long since he'd felt a warm embrace. Hideki let Mother Miyagi hug him, and he hugged her back. Ichiriba Chudi, she said in Okinawan. It meant, now that we've met, we're family. Hideki nodded. Thank you, Hideki, she added, releasing him. I hope you find your sister. The American soldiers took the Miyagi family away to safety, and Hideki slipped away, headed south once more in search of Kimiko.